This video is brought to you by the Complete Rock and Metal Songwriting Guide. Today on Wrist Beards and Gear, we talk about six guitar amps that I wish they still made. So I recently did a video talking about the five guitars that I wish they still made, and logically, it made sense for us to talk about the six guitar amps that I wish they still made. Boiling this list down to six was extremely tough. You guys also had a lot of good suggestions on uh, Facebook when I asked you guys what amps like you would like to be seen made again. So with that, let's talk about six amplifiers that I wish they still made. Amp number one seems like an obvious choice, the Rev F rectifiers from Maze the Boogie. I know these are hyped. I know as someone who owns pretty much all of the Boogie rectifier revisions, the Rev F is probably my favorite. And I don't like saying that to add to any hype fuel. They really, really got it right with the Rev F rectifiers. And you know what? They are highly coveted for a reason. I am the owner of a two channel Rev F triple rectifier. And it's just a great amp. And I wish they would just, they would just reissue it as it was. Amplifier number two that I wish they would still make is a classic. It's the PV VTM series. Both the VTM 60 and the VTM 120 were, I don't know, I think those amps were way ahead of their time. They had a set amount of uh, dip switches that you could customize your tone into literally anything you wanted to. One of the most notable users of the VTM 120 amps was Soundgarden's Kim Thale, and you can hear the VTM pretty much exclusively on Soundgarden's Bad Motorfinger album, which in and of itself is a classic. Are you a guitar player that has a bag o riffs and no real way or know how to structure them into a finely crafted song? Well, my buddy Trey Xavier is here to help. So the Complete Rock and Metal Songwriting Guide is going to cover every aspect of writing a song, from a single musical idea to even generating fresh new ideas to go along with the ones that you already have. And I want to know that no musical theory is needed for this course. So the Complete Rock and Metal Songwriting Guide is a 15 hour course. Everything is covered, including but not limited to defeating writer's block once and for all, writing guitar, bass, drum, and keyboard parts, writing lyrics and vocals and transitions and harmonies, and how to structure a song, and much, much more. It's all there for you. Now, as someone who has struggled with his own songwriting abilities, I can tell you that this course is very, very encompassing. Where else are you going to find a course on how to generate your own riffs as well as writing lyrics in the context of a rock and metal song? You won't find it. Now, I will go ahead and link down below in the description to the complete rock and metal songwriting guide if you want to take your songs to the next level. Amplifier number three, the Marshall JCM 900 SLX. Now, this... Uh, unlike the rest of the 900 series amplifiers, did not use clipping diodes and was an all tube design, high gain, really it was Marshall trying to keep up with the new at the time, high gain amplifier uh, popularity. And so the SLX came out very, very, very good sounding amplifier. It's not your typical Marshall flavor. It can definitely get super high gain. It can do the chugs, it can do the metals and it's Marshall. It's awesome, kind of hard to find, not crazy rare, but you definitely do not see these every day on reverb. Amplifier number four is technically, I guess, not an amplifier, it's a preamp. It's the Soldano X99 preamp. Now these preamps were essentially a multi-channel uh, SLO 100 preamp, which you could use with any power amp you wanted to, which if you uh, took something like a big old two powered VHT power amp, you were in for a really good time. Very, very rarely do you see the uh, the X99 or even the X88 for that matter. Um, these are highly coveted preamps for a reason. They sound incredible. My buddy Ken Susi from Unearth and Fishman has the X88 and it's just mwah, such a classic. Amplifier number five that I wish they would still make the Crank Revolution 1, believe it or not, the original Rev 1 amplifiers from Crank were just goodness. Now, 
a lot of people don't remember them as anything super special, at least, you know, the people that I interact with and talk with about these amplifiers, having heard several in person back in the day, I always really, really liked all of the tones that I heard from the original Rev 1 amplifiers and the Krankenstein for that matter. I have never owned one myself. I've played through one just a handful of times and always enjoyed the experiences that I had tonally with them. And I would love to find a reissue or I wish they would make a reissue Rev 1 crank. And last but not least, amplifier number six that I wish they would still make is the PV. JSX. I dearly miss my PVJSX. This was the Joe Satriani signature amplifier, and it was a uh, modified or based on the PV Triple X, which in its own right is a great amplifier. They're different amplifiers, but the JSX really just, it just brought it. It was just awesome, very usable, very cool, very modern sounding even today. And you can get them for like seven or 800 bucks used on reverb, but I wish they would still make it because that would be pretty cool. All the pickable links down below in the description. If you have a favorite amp that you would like to see reissued, please leave them down below in the comments. Maybe we'll make another one, a part two, part three, part four. You never know. Fluff out.